In this video, we're going to do an example that uses the multiplication rule in uh, combinatorics. So let's think about pin numbers, right? Every time you open a new account, I swear they make you remember a new pin number. And so this is an example where we're going to allow, often pin numbers are just numbers, but we're going to allow letters too. So we're going to say that a standard pin number can be any sequence of four symbols chosen from the 26 letters in the alphabet, so this is case independent, it means we don't, we're ignoring upper or lower case, so just 26 letters, and the 10 numerical digits, 0 to 9. If we assume that repetition is allowed uh, in our pin number, that's important, reputation, repetition is allowed, how many possible pin numbers are there? Well, for the first number, we could choose any of the 26 letters or 10 numbers. So there's 36 ways to choose the first number. In this case, since repetition is allowed, that means there's also 36 ways to choose a second number, and so on, because they don't depend on the previous steps. So the number of ways we have, uh, or the number of possible pin numbers, is we're going to have 30... 36 times 36 times 36 times 36, which is equal to 36 to the 4. And if you pull out a calculator, you're going to find that this equals 1,679,616. And that's the number of possible pin numbers. Okay. Now, what if we have the same problem, but now there's no repetition allowed? Okay, well, for the very first digit, we're not worried about repetition because we have no previous digits. So we're going to say the very first digit, we still have 36 different values we could put in that space, right? All the letter, any letter from the alphabet or any numerical digit. Now, the key point is the second number, now we've used up one of the digits, and we can't allow repetition. So I don't know what digit we used, but we only have 35 options left. Right? Because say we picked an A. Well, now there's all the letters in the alphabet except for, for A plus the digits um, in spot 2. Okay, so now we've filled two spots, and we've used up two characters, so to speak, two, um, two values. So we only have 34 left for the third spot, and then 33 left for the fourth spot. Now, this is interesting because I'm not saying that the number is dependent. You know, if I picked an A for the first spot, my second number has no dependency except that it can't be an A. So it doesn't say that because I picked A, it is a B. That's a dependency, that's not independent. But here, it's just the number of choices reduced, but within those numbers, we still have zero dependence. So this still follows, and we can still use the multiplication rule. So this is 36 times 35 times 34 times 33. And again, if you get your calculator out, you'll find that this is 1,413,720 possible pin numbers. And this is without repetition. So going back to prob our probability, we found that there are 1,679,616 pin numbers with repetition and 1,413,720 pin numbers without repetition. All right, so we want to know what is the probability of randomly being assigned a pin number without repetition. Well, this we can go back and use our equally likely probability formula. So we have an event space, E, and a sample space, S, 
and the event space E is the probability of randomly being assigned a pin number without repetition. That's going to be 1,413,720. Out of all possible pin numbers, that means those that include repetition, is going to be 1,679,616. And if you work that out, you're going to get 84.2% chance of being randomly assigned a PIN number with no repetition.